Hello and welcome back to Ordinary Differential Equations, the video series where we talk about all kinds of differential equations. For example, in the last videos we have talked about systems of linear differential equations. They have really nice properties and in today's part 20 we will show how we can solve a homogeneous autonomous system. And there we will see that exactly for this we can use the so-called matrix exponential. However, as always, before we start with the definition, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please don't forget, with the link in the description, you can download additional material for all the videos. And with that we can immediately start and as in the last videos, we will talk about systems of linear differential equations. However, in this video we have two restrictions. Namely, we only consider systems that are homogeneous and autonomous. Hence, our system can simply be written as x dot is equal to a times x, where a is an n times n matrix. So you see our system here is homogeneous because we don't have an additive constant here and it's autonomous because our matrix does not depend on the time t. So for the whole differential equation, we only have to consider one matrix a. And moreover, it's also sufficient to consider the initial value problem at the time zero. Obviously for autonomous systems, we can always shift the starting time to zero. And then we can just consider any starting point x zero in Rn. And the question for today is, how does the solution for the initial value problem look like? Therefore, let's put the initial value problem into a box and let's call it EVP. And by the pika lindeler theorem, you already know that we have a unique solution for this initial value problem. Moreover, we also know that we have a global solution, so the solution is defined for all points in time. And now if you remember the proof of the pika lindeler theorem, then you know that we used the Banach fixed point theorem there. And exactly this one also gives us an iteration scheme to find the solution. We call it PK iteration and we have already discussed it in part 13. And the idea here is really simple. We just start with the guess for the solution and then step by step we make it better and better. So let's say our first guess here is called alpha tilde, which means it's a map from R into Rn and then we apply our map phi. So please recall the definition of our map phi. It's defined as x0 plus the integral from 0 to t of the vector field here on the right hand side. But instead of x, we have our alpha tilde of s there. Therefore, for our linear homogeneous case here, it's really simple. We just have a matrix vector multiplication inside the integral. And now the idea here is that we apply phi iteratively and then in the limit we get out our actual solution of the initial value problem. Indeed, this is a fact that comes out of the Banner fixed point theorem. So it's definitely something we can use and now let's see what happens to the general system here in the Picard iteration. And you might already know, the first guess we have for the solution of the initial value problem is always the constant solution. Hence, the second condition in the initial value problem here is definitely solved. Okay, and then we can do the first step in the Picard iteration. So we apply our map phi for alpha tilde, which means we have to calculate one integral here. But this is not really complicated because everything inside the integral is constant. So it's just this matrix times the vector times t. And now since the first and the second part here have x0, we can factorize it. So what we use here is the n times n identity matrix plus t times the matrix A. And then we multiply everything with our vector x0. Okay, so this was the first step. We are now closer to the actual solution here. And you know we can make it better with the second step. And the only thing we have to do is to apply phi again. And this is also not so complicated because inside the integral we just have the matrix A times the thing from before. 
So this is how it works. The outcome of the step before is the input of the new step. And now you can just multiply the matrix A and then you see we only have to solve the integral of the constant and the integral of the function t. So the constant gives us t times a times x0 and the second part gives us 1 half times t squared a squared x0. And moreover, you can immediately see we can simplify it as before by putting x0 to the right hand side. So first we have the identity matrix again, then t a and then 1 half t squared a squared. And there we have it. This is our output here, which means for the third step, it will be our input. However, I think you can already see where this goes to and therefore I immediately write down the nth step. The result there will be the identity matrix plus the terms from before plus 1 over 6, t cubed a cubed and so on until we have the nth entry which is 1 over n factorial times t to the power n times a to the power n. And as before, all these matrices are multiplied to the vector x0. And now the only thing we have to do is to form the limit n to infinity. And by the general theory we already know, this gives us the solution of the initial value problem. And if we call the solution alpha of t, we now have a formula for it. Namely, it's given by a series of matrices. So we have a sum from k is equal to 0 to infinity. And inside we just find k factorial in the denominator and t times a to the power k in the numerator. And then the matrix that comes out of this series is multiplied with x0. And we already know this works for every x0, which means this series here is well defined because the solution exists by the pika lindeler theorem. And for this reason, this matrix that comes out of this limit here gets a special name. It's simply called the matrix exponential. And you see why? Because the formula is exactly the one we know for the exponential function. The only thing that is new is that we put a matrix instead of a number into the exponential function. Otherwise the definition as a series looks literally the same. And for this reason one also often writes simply e to the power t a. It represents the same thing, namely the well-defined limit of the partial sums here. So this is the matrix exponential a matrix function which gives us the solution of our system of linear differential equations. However, please don't forget the restrictions we had. We need a homogeneous system and an autonomous system. But then, in conclusion, under these assumptions, solving the system just means calculating such a matrix exponential. And this is exactly what we will now do in a concrete example. And for the sake of visualizations, it's always helpful to take a two-dimensional system. So we have x1, x2 and the derivative of them. And this one should be equal to a 2 times 2 matrix times x1, x2 again. And now for the matrix I want to choose 0, minus 1, 1, 0. I do this because for this example we already know that the orbits should be given by circles. More precisely, we should have circles around the origin. Indeed, this is what you should see if you put the vector field here for the right hand side into the plane. However, now we should also be able to calculate all these orbits simply by the matrix exponential. So what we have to do is to calculate the series for this matrix A here. You might think that this is really complicated because we have infinitely many terms in the sum. However, if we find some structure in the formula, we can use that to simplify it. So I would say, let's start with the first four terms here. So we just have the identity matrix and then the matrix A itself. And for the second term, we have to multiply this with itself. And now it's not hard to see that we get minus 1 on the diagonal. 
And for the third term, we just have to multiply these two matrices. And there you see we get 0 here and minus 1 there and plus 1 and 0 in the second column. Okay, and then we are ready to go to the next one, which has the factor 4 factorial in the front. Hence, now to get a to the power 4, we have to multiply this matrix with our original one. And there we immediately see a nice result, because this one gives us 1s on the diagonal. So it's actually our 2 times 2 identity matrix again. And this implies that the powers that come now just repeat in this order here again and again. And there you see, this is the structure we searched for, because it makes the whole calculation here very simple. In other words, we have a 2 times 2 matrix for the exponential function here, and we already know all the entries. So let's start by writing down the first one. This one starts with 1 from the identity matrix, then we don't get a term here, but the next one would be minus 1 half t squared. And then we don't have the one for the power 3, but we have the one for the power 4 again. And now you already see, the whole thing here will repeat, and we only get the powers that are even. And moreover, the sign in front will also alternate. And maybe you already recognize this formula, because this is the power series for the cosine. So in other words, here in the first entry of the matrix, we have the cosine of t. So this is really nice, because it makes the whole matrix exponential much shorter. Okay, and then let's talk about the second entry here in the first column. The first input we get from the identity matrix is a 0. And then the next one is plus t. And for the power 2 we get a 0 again, but then for the power 3 we have minus 1 over 6 t cubed. And with that you already see, we only have the odd powers and the signs will alternate as well. So this result you should also see as a power series again and it represents the sine of t. And with that we should go to the second column, but there we recognize everything repeats again. Indeed, in the bottom right corner we find the cosine again, and in the top right corner we have the sine again, but now with a minus sign in front. And with that we have it, this 2 times 2 matrix is our matrix exponential. And now we have learned, this one we can use to write down the solution of an initial value problem. So for example, we can take the initial value problem with an x0 here on the x1 axis. So let's describe that as c0. So for example, in the picture above, we would have this point here. Hence what should come out is exactly this circle as the orbit. Therefore, let's simply test if this is correct. So for alpha t, we have to multiply the matrix exponential with x0. So we take our 2 times 2 matrix with cosine and sine inside, and then we multiply it with c0. And then the result is really simple, we get c times the first column. So we have cosine and sine of t, and we know they describe a circle in the plane. In fact, this calculation now shows that all orbits are circles. More concretely, the only thing we can change for our solution alpha here is at which point in time we are at a given point. However, this shift in time will not change the image of the solution, namely the orbit. Okay, so there we have it. The result of this video is that now you know how to calculate all solutions for a system of linear differential equations, provided that they are homogeneous and autonomous. If they are not autonomous, this matrix exponential is not enough, because the matrix A will depend on the time t as well. Therefore, for a non-autonomous system, the generalization here is not clear at all. Therefore, this is definitely something we should discuss in the next videos. So I really hope we meet again, and have a nice day. Bye bye.